You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nero here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragons. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Supernova. So the last place we left off, we had just left the funeral. We just paid our respects. You know, we learned the truth of why the power was passed on to uh, uh, us in the first place. And man, I can't wait to see where this story goes. It's uh, it's pretty cool. Um, I can't wait till the other characters are fully fleshed out either. It's gonna be awesome. But anyway, guys, let's jump right into it. Sit back and enjoy. Let me entertain you for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right in. All right. Arm chain, you are up. Okay. <clears throat> Too bad you both got in trouble with Unbound for shirking your patrol duties. The tiger winces at that. I guess the point is, Fang will go along with whatever dopey activity you can come up with, so long as you present it right. Nisus winks at him. Nisus winks at Nisus winks at me as he says it. You know what? Scratch that. You don't even need to present it at all that. You don't even need to present it all that well. Hey, I'm not that easy to persuade. If you say so, big guy. Vince pounces the uh, pounces the fox and I laugh, then joins in himself. No, oh, but seriously, trying to do stuff like that while Emma's around. She likes it when we stay focused on what really matters, duty and responsibility and such. What's her alter ego? Oh, she's the county prosecutor. Whoa. Yep. Wow, how does she find the time to be a superhero, too? The job makes sense, though. I'm sure it takes just one look from those, inten those intense eyes for the criminals to confess everything. It makes my skin crawl, and I haven't even done anything wrong. Okay, I've done some things wrong, but those are too minor to get me in trouble with someone like her, right? I doubt she cares to deal with minor acts of vandalism and trespassing. Besides, I've never been caught. Regardless, Unbound sure is scary. I hope I never get on her bad side. Either way, now that the mood is lighter, at least we can chat away while Vince drives us through downtown. Frank asks to be dropped off a couple blocks down from his apartment building, saying he wants to take a short walk. When Vince rolls the car to a stop near Grifton, he pats my shoulder once before I get out. Hey, text me if you need anything, alright? Sure thing. Uh, thanks, Vince. I wave goodbye as the tiger drives off. Back in our suite, I find myself alone with Lucas slightly at the library studying for his exams. If you guys hear any noises... It's, uh, they're, they're doing our field. They're doing our fields outside. So, yeah. Big vehicles and such. Big vehicles and big noises. I should do some of that myself, but I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it right now. <laughs> now that I have a moment all to myself, I let my curiosity guide my actions. It's high time I gave this armor a proper test. But first, I lock my room, hide my laptop so the NSA doesn't get any ideas, and make sure the blinds are closed. Then I clear as much space in the middle of the room as I can. Admittedly, this isn't the best place to be doing this, but then again, what would be? I could try to sneak onto the roof. I'm gonna think of it. I will need to find a safe spot at the college where I can take off unseen, won't I? I'll worry about that later. I into my mental checklist it goes. First, the armor. That's cool. First person. Feeling a little dorky as I stand there, I am arm upraised. I nevertheless try to concentrate on the task at hand. The figure depicted in the center of the patterns draws my eyes, so I stare at it, envisioning myself as the warrior clad in Templar's armor. Just need to fight the small voice in my head that says it's silly to imagine myself like that. I can fight just fine, bitch. Yep, take blows, swing the mace around, drop some supervillains. I can do it. Wouldn't be hearing, wouldn't be wearing this thing otherwise. As if reacting to my thoughts, the bracelet vibrates. For sure this time, then glows red, blinding me for a moment. And starting with my right arm, the armor starts forming right out of thin air, translucent shapes solidifying into familiar forms as the gauntlet spreads up my hand and wrist. Uh, whoa! I stand still as more and more of my body is covered, spreading from my right side to the left, the armor startlingly light compared to what I've been expecting. As the helmet forms, I close my eyes, but the pressure is light, and when I look again, the field of view, the field of view through the slits remains much wider than I would have thought. It takes a few seconds for form in full, seconds that I keep my body frozen in place. When I move, it's, once again, oddly easy. The only discomfort I feel is from my tail, squish, my tail squished up against my back. My clothes aren't gone, but even then, my fur is enough of a cushion between my skin and the metal. I flex my fingers, fold my arms, and take several steps around the room. The glow from Templars, no, my armor throws a soft red light around the room. After spending several minutes just testing my movements, it occurs to me to look in the mirror at, la at last, when my eye and my eyes open wide at the sight. Oh, nice! It's still very much Templar's armor, but the shapes have changed somewhat. The helmet in particular looks different, with much sharper angles. Even the plume is missing. 
Huh. I guess it's, uh, tailored to each individual. That's pretty cool. I can't deny it looks hella cool, though. Just a bit different. I guess the public will have to get used to that. After more time spent examining myself in the mirror, I turn around and step to the center of the room again. Do I feel stronger? I kinda do. To test my theory, I slide my paw into the bed frame and lift. It's not a stark contrast, but there's an undeniable increase in strength there. Awesome. But then, now, now then, time to see if I can figure out this whole flying thing. As I concentrate on what to do, the light on the greaves on the light on the greaves and around my heels intensifies, and I start to float up. Holy crap! It's just several inches off the floor, but I quickly find that it's difficult to hold my balance and start flailing it with my arms as I laugh. Awesome! This is so fucking awesome! Fuck it! I should go outside and try this shit for real. I'd go find some crime to stop if it wasn't if I wasn't supposed to be keeping a low profile. But doesn't mean I can't fly around, right? I could. Hey, yo, Nick! Wanna come out for dinner? Lucas's voice sends me crashing back to reality, and to the floor as well, as my concentration slips and I drop with a resounding cling. Dude, you okay in there? Y yeah, drop my backpack. Ugh, alright, so, dinner? Nah, I'm gonna eat late. Uh, go on without- go on without me. I lie on the floor for a bit, heart pounding against my chest. I can't re restrain a giggle, though. Alright, maybe I should be more cautious, but... <sighs> Shit is, to put it bluntly, really freaking cool. I roll to the side and will, and will the armor to disappear. It does, much quicker than it formed, and I'm left staring at the bracelet. Yeah, I can definitely work with this. My fur is matted and I've become a little sweaty, but I couldn't care less. I'm practically vibrating with excitement. How does the others how does how do the others actually expect me to sit around and study when I have this? Okay, okay, calm down. I can't go out yet. Even if I'm half tempted to throw open the window and try this flying thing out, properly this time. The time for that will come soon enough. I pace around the room, grinning from ear to ear while I wait for my heartbeat to subside. I should do something productive. I, I decide to look up Gregory on my phone, and as expected, he's not officially listed as the director of spec. Searching for the Baron's civilian identity is much more fruitful, since there aren't many albino rats in Nova named Tim, and the results aren't surprising in the least. Rich boy from a billionaire family. Shocker. I'll look into him more later. I take a quick look at the at the Cape Act, too, but slogging through the legalese is a quick reminder of why I never considered a career in law. I try to extract the baby points, at least. Anyone with superpowers who intends to use them to fight crime needs to register with the government. Use of powers on foreign soil is banned. Superheroes can be held accountable for property damage or excessive use of force, yada yada. I feel my eyes glaze over. I close the tab and retrieve the USB drive the rat gave me, curious to find out what information he does, he, does, he deigned to share. Huh. The observatory and satellite ray going on. This year, tensions rising in the Imperial our military base. Can... Kawhi? <laughs> De Niro fluff butt. What? Stop saying horny. It's offensive and disrespectful to. <laughs> horny, 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 horny. 15 supervillains that are nicer than you think. <gasps> no more future! No more future! Yo, Brian wants to run a one shot over spring break. You in? M7, any class. Ah, oh, that's fucking cool. No more future. Putting it into my tablet, I dismiss the notifications. Open the new folder and enter the password the Baron gave me. Ooh, Kaiser Flicker. Fia Fiasco Fox, General General Gestalt, Gordon, Gorgon, Hellhound, Lady Winter, Kismet, Calamity, Kaiser, Jovial J. Jovial J? A superhero a name? What the fuck? Lyra Loco, Magog, Master Alabaster. <laughs> Miss Click. Miss Click? Come on! Null Zero, Ogre, Panzer Possum. Oh, fuck, that's a cool name. Ragnarok, Rag, Ragnarok, Raging Robin, rows and rows of files scroll across the screen. Most of them are dossier dossiers on what I presume to be various supervillains of the West Coast. <clears throat> Miss Click, huh? What a oh god, it's a fucking horrible super supervillain name. Some names I see are familiar. Minor crooks that got their day in the limelight before being promptly jailed or forced into hiding. And some so famous I'm surprised he even bothered including them here. <clears throat> Lady, Lady Winter Weather Manipulation. Too many to list. 
has been operating for three decades now, started in Oregon, but has gone up against every major superhero team on the West Coast. Powerful weather manipulation abilities make her exceedingly dangerous. More on page five. Never engage alone. Lethal force authorized. Cooperation with Canadian superheroes authorized. Recently operating out of Alaska. Ice fortress likely constructed with the assistance of another powered individual. Plans unclear, but likely involve global conquest. Costumes over the years have continued to influence the fashion industry. Strange legacy for a supervillain. Likely flattering. Huh. Even preschoolers know Lady Winter. Or hell, Flicker is practically a historic figure. Even if nobody's quite sure if they're even sensing it anymore, seeing as how they're a being of pure energy now. Just wandering the desolation in New Mexico like some kind of silent guardian. According to the Baron's notes, they occasionally make their way west, though. Okay, for now, I only open the dossiers that catch my eye. Shatterbox. RTM Sokolov. Sound manipulation. That level medium, known crimes, grand larceny, larceny, kidnapping, murder, destruction of public property, vandalism, trespassing, and jaywalking. <laughs> Lieutenant of the Northern Syndicate, likely kept around as the chief enforcer, violently unstable, known for highly erratic behavior, lethal measures Lethal measures have been authorized, but capture if possible. Impressive offensive potential, see page 3 for power breakdown, and pages 9 through 12 for incidents involving him. The defense potential non-existent, best snipe from outside six sensory range. Huh, I like this little steampunk wallpaper and theme, that's pretty cool. Besides general information, the Baron has included notes on counting on countering powers, a detailed list of criminal activity, and full reports of encounters with the supervillains. He hasn't spared any hasn't spared any snark in his notes either. Not that it's unwarranted. Some of these people have picked truly atrocious aliases, Dr. Scion. That's pretty cool. Dr. Albert Wheatley, controller for vegetative growth, full extent on clear regeneration, threat level low, illegal experimentation, arson, larceny, and gray larceny. Seems to be gathering materials to continue the research that led to his lab accident. Not strictly dangerous, since so far he has refrained from using lethal force and tends to avoid violence when possible. Using violence to restrain the police force, police force guards, and super areas will go up against him. Lethal force unnecessary. While fire would be extremely effective, it is not its use is not advised. Capture pre preferable. Weirdly, he hasn't ranted about global warming yet. Missing the forest for the trees? <laughs> I'm surprised to see some individuals that have no criminal record. The Baron has listed information on the so-called vigilantes, too. Yes, they're subject to arrest because they won't abide by the CAPE Act. Does he expect me to try and bring them in if I encounter one? Fuck that shit. More dossiers, and there is... The Black Wolf. My heart skips a beat, and I feel a spike of anxiety drive itself through my stomach. I can fight. I can fight. There's no reason to be this, this afraid. Nisus will kick this bastard's ass. Just breathe. I'll be just fine. I sit there rubbing my forehead, repeating the words like a mantra. All my earlier exhilaration is gone, replaced by a mounting dread. Fuck! No, this is stupid. There are people far scarier on the Baron's list. It's just some asshole wolf with a glowing fist. He probably took Templar by surprise. At best, he'll never make me... I'll never have to deal with him myself. And if worse comes to worst, I'll pull through. No more. No, more than that. I'll kick his fucking ass. <sighs> With this, I can do it. The armor reforms around me and, bring, and brings with it a sense of security I so desperately need right now. Yeah, sure, I've seen it broken, but it's whole now, and it can protect me. It will protect me. Whatever comes, I'll be ready. I dismiss it again, not feeling any calmer, but at least a little reassured. Still, I need to, some, I need to somehow work this energy off. Exercise will do me some good. After a quick change of clothes, I, I'm, out of the, I'm out on the quad, stretching before my run. And I'm off. No music, just the street ambience. The pounding, of the, the pounding of my pulse in my ears. I can do it. I'm not running away. If that canine bastard appeared in front of me right now, I'd rush straight at him. Tackle him to the ground. Beat him senseless. Fuck you, wolf. That's right, I'm not scared. I've no reason to be. I'm Templar now. I'm as, I'm, as I'm rounding a corner, I skid to a stop to take a breather. A phone buzzes in my pocket. I check who it is. Huh. A message from Nisus. Hey, we need to talk. Can you come to the Grifton Park in half an hour? Yeah, I can wait there. I'm out on a run right now. Hmm. I frown at my phone, feeling a little nervous about the sudden request. What could Nisus want to discuss so soon after the funeral? I guess I'll find out shortly. Maybe I can vent a little, too. I know he'll lend me an ear. Yeah, this is good timing, actually. The company of another superhero is just what I need right now. I need to run towards Grifton Park, picking up... I return to run towards Grifton Park, picking up more energy with every step. Let's see what the fox has to say. 
With our meeting place being just a ten minute jog away, I take it slow. The sun was already setting when, when I left my dorm, and darkness is descending now. Ooh, that's a cool, that's a very cool image. I expect the park to have plenty of people walking around at this time of day, and I'm proven right. Folks tend to congregate near the central fountain area, though, so it's not surprising when Frank texts me again, saying to meet him near the west end. I spot him almost immediately, wearing casual clothes for once. Looks like he also had the idea to go on a run. Frank's handsome. The superhero outfit doesn't do a good job of showcasing that he's actually pretty cut. Well, of course he is. There's a tree of guys chatting not far from me, so instead of approaching, the fox tilts his head towards one of the empty pathways. I jog over to join him. Out on a run, too? Uh-huh. Hey, since we live near each other, we need to talk. Uh, okay. About what? Nisa stops, prompting me to do the same. For a moment, he stares off into the distance, his whiskers twitching before turning his sharp gaze to me. You. Is this about my training? There's not going to be any training. What do you mean? Nick. Just quit this already. We both know it's stupid. Hand me the bracelet and forget any of this happened. I gape at him, waiting for the just kidding that never comes. What are you talking about? You heard me. What even brought this on? I, I couldn't stop thinking about the funeral. Well, okay, regardless, the answer is no. I'm not having this discussion again. He uses his fur bristles as he clenches his teeth. There's no discussion here. Well, we're in agreement. Do you have a fucking death wish? Take a step back from the fox, my fingers trembling. N no? Come on, I'll be careful, okay? I thought it all through. Have you? Just what the fuck did you think through? It took you less than a day to agree to this shit. Again, I'm rendered speechless by his tone. What the hell is his problem? I've had more time to think since then, and my decision hasn't changed. He rubs his eyes and snout, taking deep breaths as if to calm himself down. Nick, do you have any idea how dangerous this is? How much danger you're putting the others in? You have friends, family, you have a fucking life. Do you want to ruin it all just because Templar decided to shove you into his armor? I'm not going to put anyone in danger. How many times do I need to say this? I'll be careful. The stuff you're saying would have been true for you guys too, no? When, you're start when you were starting out? It's not the same. How the hell is it not the same? Vince was in college when he started, just like me. No, it's not the fucking same. Fang was a nobody, just a kid beating up random thugs in alleys. Nobody would be gunning for him before he learned what he was doing. You? You're goddamn Templar. How is it the same? Do you know how many enemies Templar has? How many psychos would love to claim the glory for murdering him? You think all that will just go away because you're the new guy on the block? Wake the fuck up. I'm trembling all over now. My head feeling sluggish as I struggle to form the words. He's wrong. This is something I've thought about. Why am I buckling under his verbal assault? He shook hands with me, as Templar. I don't know why, but the lame reply forms on my lips before I have a chance to stop myself. He just rolls his eyes. Shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have gone easy on you. The Baron had the right idea. For some reason, it's his last words that pierce through my brain like a lightning bolt, and with it, the anger that had been simmering spills over. No, he fucking didn't! And I don't need to justify my fucking decisions to you or him. I'm Templar now. End of discussion. Nisa's expression changes. His gaze becomes chilling, and a whole different kind of shiver runs down my spine. I stumble back, instinct prompting me to raise my fists in front of me. But then the moment is gone, the fox's eyes widening in surprise before he averts his gaze. I'm not going to attack you, Nick. Good, because you'd have to pry the bracelet off my cold, dead wrist. He lets out a beleaguered sigh. I just don't get it. Why are you being so stubborn about this? Uh-huh. All right, um, here, I'm going to save it right here, and I'm just going to go through these options. Let's see what we can do. Let's see. It's the right thing to do, okay? If I gave up now, I knew I'd regret it for the rest of my life. I need to do this. God fucking damn it. Fine. Have it your way. I peer at him suspiciously, but it appears Nisus has given up. Okay, so let's see. I want to honor Templar. Templar did so much for this city. I can't let his bracelet just sit there. Danny didn't get it. I did. Oh, okay. Okay, so it seems like it works out. I'm just going to go through these little options real quick. It's simple. I gave a promise and I intend to keep it. You had no idea what you were promising. So, I learned it and I still want to go through with it. 
Okay, so... And last one. For the sake of the O'Connors. Mrs. O'Connor seems so relieved. I'm not going to take that away from her. Danny is trained. He knows what to do. That's not the point. Besides, I don't plan on sitting on my ass. I'll be ready for this shit. Which one do I want to go with? Okay, so which one do I first want to go with? Because I want to honor Templar. Okay. Okay. Alright. Appeared suspiciously, but it appears Nisus has given up. Then... We're done here. You can talk with Fang or the Baron about your training. What? You're my mentor! I, you still want that? Oh, for fuck's sake, Nisus, if you don't want to have anything to do with me, just say so. That, that's not it. Then what is it? Other side from the fox. Nothing. Fine. We can arrange a time soon. Good. Okay. The ensuing uncomfortable silence stretches on as we both stand there. The conversation apparently concluded. So, you want to grab a bite or something? I know a place nearby. No. Ouch. Tea? Not in the fucking mood, Nick. I'm gonna finish my run. Alright, guys, I'm gonna pause it right there. Damn. I mean, I understand. He's... He doesn't... He doesn't want Nick getting killed because of this. You know, he probably likes Nick. Doesn't want to admit it to him right now. So, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!